Hey guys, we're in the middle of creating our layout for direct messages, but we're going to take a quick pause with that and jump back to how we were doing our with filter because I finally figured out how we can basically check if they're a member of a team before actually subscribing that user. So I'd like to thank someone in the comments gave me the suggestion and it's great, it works, and we're going to do exactly that. So thank you guys if you've left comments about uh, suggestions and stuff, you guys have been great. So the way we're going to do this is kind of how we're doing with this create resolver thing here with requires permission. So we're going to create a new one here. And the trick that we were doing wrong is we were trying to do it, or I was trying to do it on this function here. So instead, we're going to lift it up and put it on this function here um, before the with filter. So we're basically going to create a new, new permission here called um, team member maybe team member or requires um, team access or something like that that makes sense requires team access whatever you want to name it and we're going to wrap it here so requires team access dot create resolver and we're just going to wrap this guy And what we're wrapping is this with filter, so all the way to here. And so I'm going to get rid of this green stuff here, and now we're going to create this requires team access function. Okay, so we're going to export const requires team access, and this is going to be create resolver, so same thing we're doing here. And then we're going to say all our stuff, and then here we're going to put our logic. So I'm going to, oops. I'm going to paste in our comment and then here we have parent args user and then models and then we don't really care about this stuff here now so I'm just going to say args and we, we don't even have to do any of this just an empty uh, function parameters there so then our permissions are over here we can uncomment this stuff. So first we're gonna check if they're a user. We can pretty much just copy this here. So if they're not a user or they're not um, with the user ID, and we're gonna make this an async function, then we're gonna have this code run. So we're basically gonna just check, and the channel ID we're getting from the arguments. So channel ID, bam. Okay, just to remind you what this is doing, um, all right, so this is just too long. That's why we're getting a red line here. So we're fetching uh, the channel that uh, we're trying to subscribe to. Then we're grabbing, um, with that, we know what the team that the channel is associated with because we can get the channel.team ID. So we're fetching, we're seeing basically if you are a member of the team by checking, looking for in our member table um, channel with this team ID and the user ID of the user who's logged in. And if you're not a member, we throw an error. So that's it. And uh, we have it wrapped over here. So if we take a look, it requires team access create resolver. And let's take a look over here if we get any errors. Um, we get this thing, but you notice it reconnected. So if we refresh, looks good. Let's try to type something, hello3. Awesome, works just fine. So we're able to still subscribe to this guy. But let's see now, try to subscribe with someone. Um, so localhost 8081 and I'm just gonna try subscribing to that so subscription um, new channel message channel ID and what channel we are on general is one I'm gonna say one and I would like to see the text of the message so subscribe and we get this object object which is an error and I believe if we were to open up our console here no, it doesn't really show any errors really here, but this is an error. And if I were to say hello four, we notice we don't get anything here because we tried to subscribe and we got an error. So perfect. So now our subscription endpoint is protected and now we didn't have to hard code anything pretty much in our on connect here. So we're still just passing the user. So now we're able to support multiple subscriptions, which is really good, and have different permissions on each subscription endpoint.
And now there's one more thing I want to do that is currently broken. So we are storing the JWT token in our local storage, and then we are refreshing the tokens um, whenever they expire. And in our index over here, we have this um, add user middleware where we are sending tokens back. But right now, we're not, it's broken. So if we take a look, I'm gonna come over here to Apollo. So we have afterware, here it is. We have afterware here, and what it does is it grabs um, the headers um, which we're sending back. So if we see over here in our network tab, if I search for GraphQL, let's see if we're sending back any. So this is a post request, and notice these are the response headers. We have an X refresh token and token. Those are getting passed back, and so it should update the tokens. So if I put a console log here of headers, this should have our headers in it. But currently it's undefined. So when this refreshes, we'll see this thing come undefined and there's a problem with it. But sometimes it's supposed to be undefined, but here we see we have a token and a refresh token, so we should see them here. And so what we need to do is not call this get context here. I messed this up, we actually need to do it, we need to map over the operation first. And we need to do it here. So basically we just need to move all that stuff down here. And tab it over. And now instead of headers, it needs to be response headers because we are getting the response back. And if I console log this, this is still gonna empty and it's actually not even gonna work. And I just want to console.log the tokens as well. And I'll show you why in a second. So a refresh token and token here. And the reason why this is not going to work, and we can see it. I don't know if it'll crash or if it'll just be undefined. Here we go. Um, so there you go. It is undefined there. We actually are. That's kind of interesting. Headers.get. So we're getting tokens, but I don't know what's crashing this. Um, errors of undefined could not be cloned. Oh, we're not returning this at the bottom. So return response. There we go. So this thingy that we have right here, we need to return that at the very bottom. Um, and I'm, not, I'm surprised, usually it wants me to put um, like that, put little parentheses around since this is a, a function. Okay. All right, so notice how this is null, 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 and our headers here are null as well, which is bad. We don't want that. And I, I don't know why, but in this particular version, it's just broken. So what we're going to do is we're going to upgrade our packages. So I'm here at Slack clone client, so this is the root of my client directory. And I'm going to use a package called ncu, which basically updates all of my npm packages. So we're not just going to upgrade one, we're going to upgrade all of them, because why not? So if you don't have this, you can do npm i-g and then npm check updates, so you can install that. I already have it, so I don't need to run it. But what they'll do is they'll go ahead and install. So if I run NCA, ncua, what it'll do is it'll go ahead and install a couple of dependencies that must get upgraded or need to be upgraded. So these are the ones. And then we can run ncu. Actually, I think we need to run uh, dash u first before we do dash a. I think I messed that up. Um, looks like all the dependencies uh, match the latest now. Um, so that's surprising. We only upgraded these three. I was thinking we need to upgrade package. Oh, am I on the server? No. I want to upgrade this guy. So this guy right here, Apollo link HTTP up to 1.1. So that's good. That was the important one. So I'm all upgraded now from running those two commands. And I'm going to run yarn just to make sure everything is installed OK. And then our tokens should be working. And our header object, you'll notice, is always going to be empty like that. So I'm just going to refresh. And if it's still not working like how mine was, if you just come back over to your server, make sure the yarn is completely done running. Um, just go ahead and stop it and restart 
the server so if that get, pulls in the new packages and we should be good now assuming we actually get a um, token from the server and we can check the network tab to see if we're supposed to get a token or not um, yeah we'll let this refresh and then we'll just check this tab right here okay so we didn't get anything here in our network tab if I type GraphQL all right in our response we weren't actually getting any headers notice how it's gone so let's go back to our server and I'm just going to come over here to auth and I'm going to say this token set to one second just so we can verify that this is working. So I'm going to log in bob at bob.com bob at bob.com okay so this is null so if I refresh and we finally see something. So notice how our headers is empty. That's why I wanted to console log the tokens down here. For whatever reason when I was doing this, headers looks empty, but it's really not. We actually do have headers. So you just have to call headers.get and it goes ahead and grabs them. So we don't need that anymore. It looks like it is working. Um, we get the headers back. So every time we refresh, it's gonna do new tokens and we could actually just look here and watch as they get reset so dash e we see we just got a new token so every time but if we were gonna set we can come back here and set this to um, one hour now if I refresh we should get a new token but if I refresh again we should not get new token cool because this token will last an hour awesome so we're all fixed with that so now our Refreshing of JWT tokens is good and we'll stay up to date on our data. So that's perfect. So that's it for this video, guys. In the next video, we'll continue working on our direct message um, API, or not API, but uh, setting that up and getting the component working. Let me know if you had any trouble getting this set up. Um, I had a lot of little tricky problems with the permissions, or not the permissions, but uh, getting this working, getting the headers. The important bit is mapping and making sure you uh, upgrade your package. Um, you want to make sure you go up to 1.1. So using the thing I used or upgrading in every way. So that's it for this video, guys. Thanks for watching. I'll put all this code on GitHub.